All right. By a show of hands, how many of you guys have a phone? I do too. How many of you guys would use your phone to escape an uncomfortable situation? I would too. Now, how many of you guys would use your phone during lunch to escape talking to the unfamiliar face in front of you? Guys, I have a confession to make. In the sixth grade, since I didn't have a phone, I used to hand out cookies to make friends. And that wasn't even the worst part of it. I only handed out cookies to Asians. <laughs> I begged my parents to bring me cookies a few times a month. And as any good parents would, they agreed to my plea. So I continued to pass out cookies to the same Asians over and over. And I was cool with it. They helped me obtain a comfort zone filled with people that have similar cultural values and beliefs as me. Then comes seventh grade year, the biggest thing was basketball tryouts. Everyone was trying to prepare for basketball tryouts and make the team. But me, on the other hand, I didn't venture out of my comfort zone. So I got cut. I got cut because the people I tried out against played in different leagues like AAU, CLBB, and the YMCA. So did I learn my lesson? Of course not. Then come eighth grade year, I realized that my friends were going to a different high school than me. And I'm like, well, I guess my parents needed to bring me more cookies to my next school. Yet, I faced another dilemma. Parents weren't allowed to bring cookies to my next school. <laughs> and I was distraught. Now, I actually had to talk to people to make friends. I saw other opportunities like debate and orchestra to try to find like-minded people, but in activities like debate, I kept my viewpoint to myself because I couldn't find people that were like me. So I tried to avoid to have this intense debate with anyone that wasn't like me. My family played a huge role in me opening up, especially my mother. She told me stories about how she immigrated from India to New York, and she had to step out of her comfort zone to meet people that weren't like her friends back home in India. Then one day, I met a friend, a good friend in my orchestra class. He talked about liberal policies that were so different from my conservative beliefs. For the first time, I was able to have a productive discussion with someone that wasn't like me. Yet, we were able to connect on things like sports and music. A combination of my parents' encouragement and my friend helped plant a seed in me to become more open-minded. As a result, I started to develop a liberal-minded friend group and also sustain my conservative ties. Venturing out of my comfort zone had multiple benefits, not just personal benefits, but it also helped me in ac uh, academic benefits, like in debate. Let's go through a couple of examples. One topic was whether reporters should protect the identity of confidential so uh, sources. As a sophomore, since I was closed-minded, I would have easily agreed with this topic and made the argument that reporters put a check on corporate corruption. But as a junior, I realized that I needed to become more open-minded and more nuanced in my research. And I would have made the argument that leakers or confidential sources harm national security. Let's walk through another example. Another topic that we had was whether wealthy nations should, protect, uh, should provide development assistance to other nations. Again, as a sophomore, I would have full-heartedly agreed with this topic and made the argument that assistance reduces poverty and famine. But as a junior, I would have been way more nuanced in my research and figured out the other side of the topic and made the argument that assistance reduces the overall effectiveness of government. Not just in an academic setting, but also in a political setting, venturing out benefited me. I met a friend who soon became my senior mentor. He taught me the importance of diversifying your social media feed. As a strong conservative, most of his feed is filled with liberal news networks. And I use his method to apply to my own search engines, my own social media feed. I started diversifying my own searches to understand the unfamiliar concepts around me. I realized that venturing out will help me become a better person, a better citizen in my community, a better friend, and ultimately, more of a relaxed person. I am not intimidated to speak my viewpoint, yet at the same time, I respected others. Overall, what I realized was that I was able to push myself to new limits. My parents, friends, and teachers helped me learn the positives and negatives of both worlds. 
my viewpoint on my high school has changed. From a freshman who couldn't seem to fit in to a senior who embraces the diversity of my school. It's actually an anomaly where a school would have this much diversity causing a diffusion of cultural values. It's very likely that you have a black kid walking next to a girl with a job, walking next to a white kid, walking next to a Chinese kid, walking next to an Indian kid, all going into the same school to achieve their own personal destiny. So, how did I come out of my comfort zone? There are three steps. The first step is to be proactive. The way that it's defined being proactive is to be preemptive. That means joining different clubs, meeting new friends, trying out different activities. For me, to understand myself on a political level, I tried the I side with test to understand where I aligned with. The second step is to put forth the effort. I intentionally came out of my comfort zone to talk to people that weren't like me. But also, in terms of research, I was willing to watch videos like The Daily Show with Trevor Noah. But to also sustain my conservative ties, I watched videos from Ben Shapiro and Jordan Peterson. Throughout high school, since I didn't have my cookies, I learned the importance of a good discussion. It meant that I had to put my phone down from time to time and be uncomfortable at first, and then ease into a conversation. I used my parents' advice. For them, it didn't matter who my friends were and how it was completely opposite of my conservative beliefs. What matters is that you learn and grow from it. Maybe it wasn't meant to change who you are as a person, but become more aware of your surroundings. I also believe it's important to gain volunteer and real-world experience. Why? Because it opens us up to our diverse environment. I over my sophomore to junior year, I volunteered at a local hospital, and I volunteered at NASA. I was met with a diversified professional team, but I was also met with visitors that might have had different beliefs in me, and I was cool with it. I was forced to embrace those different beliefs. But even if you don't want to join different, uh, different uh, volunteer organizations or work anywhere, you can join different clubs at your school. For me, I joined Rocket Club, which sounds nerdy because it is nerdy. I met people that were different from me, people that liked subjects like engineering and physics, a subject that I didn't like at first. Let's move on to the last step. Don't label yourself. What I mean by don't label yourself is that you shouldn't bind yourself to a certain group. For example, no one is always an introvert or an extrovert. In some situations, you might feel timid and shy, and you're introverted. In other situations, you might feel more confident and outgoing. You're extroverted. It's easy to make friends when you're in your comfort zone. But we should fundamentally make it the point to understand the differences around us, the diversity around us. I'm definitely not saying that everyone should be a moderate. No. What I'm saying is that if you're a hardcore Republican, then you should be doing hardcore research on the liberal side, and vice versa. In a world where we're becoming increasingly closed-minded, we should be doing the opposite, to work to create more open-minded in our society. So, coinciding with the theme, let's mix it up. Here and everywhere, as we become more open-minded and ultimately step out of our comfort zone. Thank you.